summertime. It's about eight in the morning now. Still living in the uh, uh, tent. It's been nearly two months now. Um, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you should know that I have. Um, firstly, I have um, chronic fatigue syndrome since 2015, and um, it just uh, started suddenly with a virus. Um, God, it's, it's getting noisy. So there's quite a few cars. Um, so, um, there was never any explanation for what caused it, um, which is pretty typical. And I kind of um, somewhat given up on trying to um, find explanations for it, you know. Uh, you do wonder and you have ideas but um, people try a lot of things and it never most of the time it never really helps um, you hear the odd story like someone cured it with like antivirals or antibiotics and things but um, and other weird more unusual techniques but um, uh, some people will change their diet and things like that but um, anything I ever tried never really made it any difference um, but I would do an okay learn how to live with it you know and um, as a result, I was um, she doing fairly well um, health-wise before I went to prison. After I went, after I went to prison, though, that's when um, things started to get uh, slowly worse. Um, but what I would say is like just in prison as well um, it was pretty tough because like they'd make me walk like really long distances like hundreds of meters and um, some days that was okay like it wouldn't have too much of an effect but um, tends to build up over time and my legs would get really sore and sort of sensitive like inflamed muscles and um, yeah, it, I, I was able to sort of continue uh, doing what I needed to do, but sometimes I was just too like tired to go to the like English classes or whatever they um, wanted you to do, because that was like a, a long way to walk, like half a kilometer maybe. I don't know. Um, but um yeah it wasn't it wasn't too bad but um whatever happened there had some sort of effect on me that's like had a knock on effect and um it's made me develop like another illness that is harder to explain and that's uh seems like that's gotten worse and worse in the three years since then to the point where it's made me very ill this year and I've been trying to figure out what what the problem is because it got to the point where it was so bad you know it was affecting me last year but I could deal with it So yeah, one of the first things it did was it seemed to make my wrists come weak. When I sprained my wrist, it um, the injury was a bit 
worse than I would expect and but it wasn't like obvious like the the doctor would just say it was a normal sprain but it felt different and it like didn't heal after a few days like it's supposed to and it remained weak for like months uh, or like the rest of the year it was still weak and I kept wearing a wrist brace like whenever I went cycling I'd wear wrist braces then when I tried to lift um, someone's chair while they were sat on it um, to get round them same thing happened to my left wrist like six months later or whatever um, next thing that happened was I became like hypersensitive to my bedroom I had a nice bedroom and I had that's where I spent all you know most of the time I had my desk up there um, so when I got out I have my bed on the floor when I got out of bed I just lift the mattress up and put it against the wall pull the chair pull the um, chair out and sit on it and um, had to had to leave that room I don't know if it was mold sensitivity or chemical sensitivity but something made me um, start to react to that room and it happened like pretty much overnight um, moved bedrooms and I started to feel better um, but then the same thing happened in that bedroom like eight months later so then I had to move downstairs but but um, the main thing that was that was a problem was um, was giving me like massive dehydration, massive periods of dehydration, where I would have to drink like a pint of water every half an hour for like eight hours or something, which was not fun. Um, that sort of cleared up a bit going into the autumn but whenever I went on a long bike trip I would have to, in hot weather I would have to bring like loads of water like twice as much as normal um, but yeah things got really bad in December and I became hypersensitive to a lot of chemicals um, like laundry detergent particularly um, that's when I started trying to figure out what the hell was going on um, looked into one thing called MCAS mast cell activation syndrome but I decided that probably wasn't the problem then I started looking into mold again mold illnesses and it did feel it felt to me like it was a, a toxin illness like I was being poisoned by something um, which is kind of what mold illness is about but that's typically um, when you're in a moldy house that's had a lot of water damage and it has certain types of mold um, and it's fairly rare it's fairly uncommon and you'd think it would affect like multiple people in your household as well that's the thing that's the other thing but um, that's that's like the only explanation I could find initially like last year when I tried to search for like what what are these what's causing these weird problems like mold illness was like the, one of the only things I could find That was the room I was in last year, small spare bedroom. It gets really hot in there. That was the room I had when I was a teenager. From about, well, age 10, 11. 
when we moved in this house. It was very different when we moved in. There was a lot more trees. There was a big bed here and a big like um, spire shaped tree. Like a cherry tree in a spire shape. And um, we used to have big um, a big conifer hedge past that rowan tree that shielded the far end of that garden and um, so that area down there was a very sort of private area um, we had a football there's like a patio at the end we had a football net and we used to play football down there but when I was about 13, 14, 15 I like landscaped that whole end of that garden made a big deep uh, pond pond there it's not that big but it's like five feet deep because I liked um, koi carp and I thought oh yeah we could have koi carp but I never had we never had them they're expensive but um, yeah I made all this that waterfall I made as well and then I used to have another like another pond um, from there like a stream kind of like a stream with a bridge over it like a wooden pallet was a bridge over it and it where that sort of rushes there that's where it ended but it wasn't actually connected to the to the main pond um, but maybe that was my original idea was to have the water flowing all the way down and then pump it all the way back up to the top here um, then we built my summer house um, in like 2005 or 2006 or something um, initially I just um, used to use it to like go and um, read uh, books or uh, um, do my homework um, or um, I remember making white uh, playing guitar out there I used to play guitar and um, I remember making like elderberry wine and like crushing the berries up or whatever or like separating them and um, putting them through a, like a hessian um, cloth or something like straining them I think um, got from got it from my nan um, and like listen listening to like Bob Bob Marley while I was doing that and um, yeah because we so we had a massive hedge here that come out like uh, five feet from the fence or something and um, it sort of um, shaded this hole from the morning sun so that's the morning sun is up there um, but in the middle of the day down there is a sun trap you see because this is all like there's a garage there and then there's this all stone gravel on the floor so that was we would get very quite hot that quite warm down there in the summer house in the in the middle of the day and then you'd get a bit of light coming through <coughs> afternoon and evening in the summer um, those elderberries were, weren't there before they've grown up there so you'd get a bit of sun coming through the window from the west in that direction in the evening um, it was warm but it wasn't like unpleasantly warm it was it was it was nice and um, the summer house didn't come out that far initially it was a small a bit smaller I made it longer so it come out further this way um, it's quite a cheap one when we bought it so that summer house is now tw about 20 years old almost 20 years old um, it was 2016 when I extended that but I haven't I wasn't able to use it like a huge amount after then I did use it I, for a couple of years uh, sometimes
so um, yeah I thought it was some sort of toxins and it probably had something to do with mold not you know it wasn't just a sort of immune reaction to chemicals that sort of snowballed it was had something to do with mold because I'd researched and I'd found that a lot of people that had chemical hypersensitivity of this type had problems with mold or they had an illness caused by mold or something like this right um, but what didn't make sense to me was that I you know I had chronic fatigue syndrome but I lived in this house for um, since 2010 after university and I had none of these symptoms and even after I got chronic fatigue syndrome I had none of the symptoms that I've had since 2020 and none of my family are ill with they don't have the same symptoms and then they haven't become more ill in the past few years so uh, I mean I went into the tent because it was getting so bad that I, I couldn't afford to get any worse and at that time my best guess was that it was mold in the air or in the house that was caught making me ill because um, I did tests and it said the mold level was high um, and I also did tests for toxins in my body and they showed uh, three toxins which could be caused by mold are were elevated beyond what they consider normal levels so three different ones but they're none of them were like massively elevated like ten times or more they were like three or four times the normal um, so I start um, recently I've been trying to think what should I do because I can't stay in the tent forever I mean it's gonna get cold you know October time um, any improvement I was having was like very slow I did see an initial improvement from getting outside but it didn't seem to continue I did feel better after about three weeks but I was clearly still ill with the same disease so I started thinking what can I try what can I do and um, yeah I just thought things over through over again and I realized that um, something must have changed in my body to make me more sensitive to the mold in the house uh, my body was must have become unable to process the toxins from the mold in the house um, but I didn't know what had changed in my body I had no idea so I don't know exactly how but I, I, I spend a lot of time looking at these things on the internet about chronic fatigue syndrome or other things that might be related to it or just things like this um, obviously mold as well I did a lot of research into and um, somehow um, recently the this topic of candida come to my attention there's this um, fungus called candida that lives in your body and I've heard of it before as being a problem in relevance to chronic fatigue syndrome but um, it's never really been on my radar as something I needed to worry about and um, if you do a quick search about it they just it just says um, you can tell that you have a candida problem 
because you'll get like a white tongue and I didn't have a white tongue um, and I've never had any of the symptoms you would get you can get from candida like um, skin problems uh, itching or just fung fungal infection type problems like um, it says athlete's foot and things um, you know you'd notice something on your tongue or your skin um, um, or it said um, you could get frequent like water infections and I had like none of this um, so I just thought yeah I probably don't have candida and even if I did it wouldn't be like a big problem because it's you know just something people get and it's a minor issue and like women get like yeast infections all the time or whatever or fungus infections or candida or whatever so I kind of like underestimated it and I dismissed it right so I thought it's probably not a possibility um, then I don't know how but somehow um, I've like thought about it again and um, I found more information and this information's to told me that this candida can cause basically all of the symptoms that I've been having problems with food allergies um, chemical sensitivity especially to perfumes and like artificial fragrances um, mold sensitivity you know all these problems and I've had trouble with my stomach where I can barely ever go to the toilet like once a week um, it was um, and obviously if there's candida in your stomach it could affect your stomach function so it all started to make sense to me this could be what what the problem is but um, I mean there's no simple test um, for, there are tests but probably gonna cost a lot of money and it's this thing like the thing is the treat the, the treatment is cheaper than the tests the treatment is fairly simple you just need to stop eating sugar and carbohydrates and you need to take things that will counteract the candida and um, it helps if you acidify your body a little bit you know acidify your stomach um, and um, take probiotics that will restore your bacteria normal bacteria and it's fairly fairly simple it seems um, but the strange thing is um, I've obviously told my told doctors about all these problems and um, no doctor has suggested to me um, that that might be the problem which is very strange it's just disappointing isn't it you know you've imagine you're ill for like three years and then the solution turns out to be something really simple that like most doctors should have picked up on how would you feel about that you know and also I've been to all these like uh, so like forums um, subreddits and stuff about mold illness and I've I've described my symptoms and my weird problems and um, to these people who like should know about mold illness and stuff or or chemical sensitivity and stuff and um, none of them have suggested that it could be candida so again that's like weird and disappointing that I've had to do all the work myself and it's also weird that I've had this that I've presumably had this problem without having any of the 
external symptoms like the white, you know, the white tongue or whatever. Um, so strange, um, but at the moment that's the best guess for me. Um, and I can finally start a treat, you know, a treatment which I've already started. That's hopefully going to do something. So yeah, that's the, that's the situation. And I uh, haven't really left the house for weeks. Um, I did go briefly to the other, to the next street on my bike and back again like three weeks ago. But to yeah, 